I'd like to bring in now His Excellency Dr. Leon Hyomung Sakong to talk about, I guess, to, to, to perhaps reflect on some of the things that have been said so far, perhaps give a, his perspective, but also to speak about the, the process of coming to a new constitution. Dr. Brand talked about a constitutional vacuum in the, in the period since 2008 and, and, and the breakdown of, of trust in that in that uh, legal underpinning, and that means the creation of a new constitution. So if I could invite Dr. Leanne to speak to that, I'll do so now. Well, thank you so very much for inviting me here, and thank you, welcome, and then Minglaba to everyone. I would like to greet you from in Burmese, Minglaba. And I think Dr. Marcus Brandt make me my task of easier. And then he has been telling you already about what is happening. And then Dr. Tunosui already telling you the background also. So I think I'm going to start with what is happening right now after I think the military coup and then what we are doing right now. And as a uh, Dr. Tunongsui and Dr. Marcus Brand has already uh, mentioned about uh, the, the military coup. Now, when the military coup came in the last year, 2021, February 1st, we, the people, started our demonstration peacefully. So this peaceful demonstration was our beginning. But as you all know, the military regimes brutally crushed down all the uh, peaceful activities. And it was continued as civil disobedience. And then I think this civil disobedience is a very strong movement, which able to, you know, stop the, the military ruling mechanism. And that was a very important aspect of our movement. But as uh, the military are more and more brutal, we continue our struggle as also as people depend process. We form people depend process and local depend process. So now our movement, I think we have three, three kind of fronts, general strike and civil disobedience movement, and then people depend process. So all these are combining with ethnic armed resistance movement. So we all come together and working for our future federal democratic union. And I come from Chin State, I'm ethnic Chin, and then I'm the vice chairman of Chin National Front. I have been in this movement for since 1988. In 1988, I was a student at Rangoon University. And after our movement was brutally crushed on the dead military regimes, then I fled from the country and working as a you know political activist and a member of Chin National Front. And 2012 to 2020, I involved in the peace negotiation. At that time, I was the vice chairman of Union Peace and Dialogue Joint Committee. I'm telling you because of what we have done all these years and how we are going to continue in this struggle. I think I would like to highlight the continuity and I think also our future, how we would like to rebuild our future and our union based on the principle of democracy and federalism. And in from 19, 2012 to 2020, we ethnic group submitted a kind of democratic principle and federal principle to, to make a change in our country and to, to, to replace, uh, to amend, not to place, to amend 2008 constitution, but we were not able to do. But after the military coup, we came together and we produced federal charter. That federal charter, five guiding principles and 64 federal principles, if you look at all this in detail, this is what we ethnic group has been proposing and then demanding since 1961, 62 already. And that was what we also proposed at the, at the peace conference and political dialogue between 2012 and 2020, but we did not get it. Now, after the military coup went, uh, we uh, elected MPs and then all these uh, democratic forces and CDMs. When we came together and produced this charter, we could agree all these principles in three weeks. I think this is the difference. What I'm trying to say here is that we, the people, are united. We, the people, are working for and then uh, willing to reestablish our country based on those principles, democratic principle and federal principle. But all the long, all the time, 
the military is the one who prevented us to rebuild our country based on those principles. And now after this military coup, as uh, uh, Dr. Marcus already mentioned, we formed three important institutions. Number one is CRPH, number two is NUG, National Unity Government, and then number three is NUCC, National Unity Consultative Council. That U National Unity Con Con Consultative Council is, I think, very, very important platform for making a new constitution uh, process. And at the National NGCC, we are five stakeholders coming together, and then all together we have 33 organizations are working together. Five stakeholders are number one is elected MPs, number two is political parties, number three is ethnic resistant movement, ethnic arms organizations, and then also number three, number four is the MS and CSO, civil societies organization, strike committees, labor union, and so on. And then number five, the fifth stakeholders are newly formed uh, state and federal unit co council. I think they are very important uh, groups because since we are looking for federal system and then the member state of the union, uh, states and regions council members are very, very important component in our struggle. And NGCC, at the NGCC, our first federal charter was uh, produced in 2000, uh, 2021, March 31st. But we re revised and reproduced a new one in uh, 2022, January 29, 29. And in this uh, charter, I, as I already mentioned, we have five guiding principles and 64 uh, federal principles. These are the guiding for our new making process. And after we produce a federal charter, now we are looking at drafting a new transitional constitution. New, a new transitional constitution for the new transitional constitutions. We have formed the constitution drafting committee composed of 24 members from all the stakeholders from NGCC, including NLD and KPIT. And, and I mentioned these two organizations because they are not officially a member of NGCC. But since we think that transitional constitution is very important for our future, and we invited them and part of that transition making process. So now we are preparing for new constitutions uh, drafting process. I think which is very important, not only for transitional period, but even for the, our future permanent constitution making process. And that is very important. But here I'm telling you about our preparation at the junior level. At the union level, we are preparing for, for example, like for the for government, NUG, for the parliament, CRPH, and then a kind of consultative council, NGCC. These, all these preparations are for the union level. But since we are looking for a federal system, as we all know, we have to prepare also not only for the union level, but also for state and region levels, the government and constitution as well. So our charter is guiding us that the in the future, we will have not only the union constitutions, but also all the state and federal union constitutions. This is what we are start looking at and are working on it. Now we are forming state and federal unit consultative council, but most of the tracks is done or mostly at ethnic state. As we all know, there are seven ethnic states. Now we have five consultative councils for ethnic states. And, and we are preparing now also for seven regions consultative council. This is a process of uh, consultations. Very recently, I was in Thailand and India and meeting with all the state MPs and even at the union level MPs and then political parties from those regions, and then also ethnic arms organizations, and consulting with how to form state and federal unit consultative council. And those consultative council will be preparing for state and regions constitution, transitional constitution. And eventually, based on our NGG one-year plan, I think our NGG one-year plan will be telling you by Justice Minister, uh, will be telling you more about that. So in line with our one-year planning, we are aiming to form in state and regions a government in one year. Because now the people are controlling the ground, 
more and more. For example, in Chin State, uh, I must say that more than 70% of the ground situation is controlled by we, the CNF, and the local CDF, Chin Land Defense Forces, and then together with local administration council. I think this is uh, the situation now, and now we are also preparing for Sky, Maguey, and other areas, even at uh, local level administrations, where we establish a local level council, and then we appointed judges, and then police, and even establish prison. Because we are taking care of the ground situations, law and order, and as much as possible. But all these tasks are not easy, because we are facing still the most brutal regimes, the most brutal who has controlled the state mechanism to kill the people and to destroy the livelihood of the people. So we are, our trust is not easy, but we are determined, we are committed. And so I think we will be able to prevail. And this constitution making process, as Dr. Magus has mentioned, is not only rejecting the military coup, but also all the establishment of the military dictatorship, their constitutions, their law, and which is, you know, all the law that they make all these years is to, to, to destroy the human right, to, 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 um, to, to make a very hard for the people alive. So we have to abolish all this law and reintroduce a new law based on the principle of democracy, human right, and universal freedom. So I think this is what we are striving for. And perhaps I'm going to stop here and I think uh, it will be better to take uh, your question and then so that we can have a more conversations. Uh, thank you so very much for inviting me here. I think we can perhaps, Dr. Marcus also will be telling you more about our uh, the, the, the content of our charter and then all the details. Uh, so I think I'm going to stop here and thank you so very much for everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Leanne, and we'll no doubt be coming back to you with questions. There's so much to discuss here.